Welcome to the SAN Source Quarterly Earnings Conference Call. All months have been placed in listening mode until the question and answer session. Today's call is being recorded. If anyone has any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Mary Gentry, Vice President, Treasurer, and Investor Relations. Ma'am, you may begin. Thank you, and welcome to ScanSource's earnings conference call for the quarter ended March 31, 2020. Our call will include prepared remarks from Mike Bauer, our Chairman and CEO, John Eld, our Chief Revenue Officer, and Jerry Lyons, our Chief Financial Officer. We will review our operating results for the quarter and then take your questions. We posted a CFO commentary that accompanies our comments and webcasts in the Investor Relations section of our website. Certain statements made on this call, including our expectations for sales, earnings per share, planned divestitures, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, and the fair value of contingent consideration for the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2020 are forward-looking statements. These statements are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially from such statements. These risks and uncertainties include, but are not limited to, those factors identified in the earnings release that we put out today and in scan sources Form 10-K for the year ended June 30, 2019 and Form 10-Q for the quarter ended March 31, 2020, as filed with the SEC. Any forward-looking statements represent our views only as of today and should not be relied upon as representing our views as of any subsequent date. ScanSource disclaims any duty to update any forward-looking statements to reflect actual results or changes in expectations except as required by law. During our call, we will discuss both GAAP and non-GAAP results and have provided reconciliations between these amounts in the CFO commentary and in our press release. These reconciliations can also be found on our website and have been filed with our Form 8K. I will now turn the call over to Mike. Thanks, Mary, and thank you for joining us today. We wanted to open our call with some comments on how we are addressing the global pandemic and our business operations during this unprecedented time. Our top priority is protecting the health and safety of our employees around the world. In mid-March, we implemented work from home for our office-based employees. The global ScanSource team swiftly and seamlessly made the transition to work from home, and we are meeting the needs of our customers and suppliers with the same levels of productivity and service as if we were in the office. Our company culture remains strong because of how we have adapted, using virtual tools and creativity to keep our employees connected. However, Nothing replaces face-to-face interactions completely, which is how we have conducted our business relationships for many years. And we look forward to seeing our customers and suppliers when we are able to do so safely. Our industry is deemed an essential business, which allowed us to continue operations at our distribution centers. I am tremendously proud of how our ScanSource team has operated safely at our distribution centers. This includes adapting to new processes around social distancing, cleaning, sanitation, and use of protective equipment. In most cases, we maintained our high service levels, although we have incurred higher expenses from additional staffing and expedited shipping. Amidst the challenges of the global pandemic, we reached our forecasted net sales for the third quarter with growth across almost all of our technologies in North America and in Brazil in local currency. This included accelerated sales for work-from-home solutions from Jabra, Poly, HP Aruba, 8x8, RingCentral, Zoom, and Microsoft as companies made the move to remote workers. With the acquisitions we've made over the last few years, we invested in significant digital capabilities. And as a result, we've gained great customer-facing software solutions. We recently brought together our software development teams from across the company, including teams from Atelisys, Inti, POS Portal, and RPM, to form a single software development group. This group will put their combined talent and effort into delivering partner revenue growth, partner automation, and partner convenience solutions. We believe our software development group will be a competitive differentiator, enabling us and our partners to strengthen customer relationships and drive more growth. I'll turn the call over now to John to highlight 
how we are positioning our business and the near-term opportunities we see. Thanks, Mike. The quarter started in January and February with consistent and positive results in all areas of our business, except for premise-based communications. Even with the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic in March, we achieved solid Q3 performances as our customer seized on work-from-home solutions as well as cloud and SaaS alternatives. As you heard from Mike, we too were able to adapt quickly and pivot to work from home by leveraging many of today's incredible voice, video, and collaboration technologies. And we delivered on our net sales forecast for the quarter. In our hardware business, we saw a significant uptake in our work from home solutions, including cameras, speakers, and headsets. We also saw increased sales of mobile data collection devices, scanners, and networking technologies. We participated in projects directly related to the COVID-19 pandemic by delivering healthcare scanners for diagnostics and testing, outfitting telemedicine carts, helping equip field hospitals, and enabling businesses for curbside delivery and pickup. In the March quarter, we launched new digital cloud-based offerings, including Zoom, Avaya Cloud Office, and Microsoft in the United States. In this challenging environment for our traditional VARs, we are also seeing a surge in new partner recruitment for IntelliSys, including more scan source VARs starting to sell cloud solutions. In the third quarter, 50% of the new partner recruits for IntelliSys were VARs. In addition, in March, we launched our Go Remote campaign, designed to enable partners to deliver end-to-end work-from-home solutions to their customers. These solutions include UCAS, CCAS, collaborations, hardware, headsets, connectivity, and security, with offerings from our leading suppliers. As part of our campaign, we were also providing partners with our definitive guide to going remote, and we'll be hosting our Go Remote Virtual Summit on June 4th, 2020. We have built and are providing enablement programs to support the health and financial wellness of our partner community. We compiled and distributed an extensive COVID-19 resource guide to help our partners better navigate the numerous yet complex government aid programs. We are also introducing a channel recovery educational series to keep our partners informed about sales, marketing, and financial programs for our partner community during these challenging times. We are very pleased that many of our suppliers have stepped up to partner with us and provide significant channel support programs to help our sales partners not only survive, but also recover during and after this crisis. Cisco, Honeywell, HP Aruba, Extreme Networks, Axis, Epson, Datalogic, as well as more than 50 emerging to mid-sized suppliers are providing a variety of financial assistance programs with and through ScanSource. We are ensuring that our partners are aware of all the ways our suppliers and ScanSource are working to help and support them. Now, Jerry will take you through the financial results and our outlook for next quarter. Thanks, John. I'll open with an overview of our results versus our third quarter forecast. We achieved our forecast range for net sales while EPS was below our forecasted range. The lower EPS includes a $4.5 million expense for inventory charges following the conversion to a new inventory management system which went live last November. These charges increased our cost of goods sold, which lowered gross profit for the third quarter, excluding this $4.5 million charge, which negatively impacted our EPS by approximately 11 cents. Our non-GAAP operating results were in line with our forecast expectations. We implemented an inventory action plan to address the warehouse inventory discrepancies and are back to typical warehouse operations during the month of April. In August, we announced plans to divest of certain physical product businesses outside of the United States, Canada, and Brazil. These businesses had net sales of $128 million for our third quarter, 
and working capital of $155 million at March 31, 2020. We have had no significant loss of headcount during the quarter. We have identified potential buyers for these businesses, and we are in due diligence and purchase, purchase agreement negotiations with those buyers. While the COVID-19 pandemic has slowed down the process and the timing, we still see strong continued interest and anticipate having agreements by the end of the June quarter. Consolidated net sales for our third quarter totaled $872 million, down 2% year over year, and up 0.5% on an organic basis. Foreign currency translation negatively impacted non-GAAP sales by approximately $13 million. Net sales for our worldwide barcode networking and security segment declined 2% year over year, or 0.8% on an organic basis. We had lower sales in parts of our North America business, partially offset by growth in other areas across our diversified technologies. Net sales for our worldwide communications and services segment declined 3% year over year and were up 3% on an organic basis, driven by growth in Brazil in local currency. We had accelerated growth for work from home solutions in March, which more than offset the continued headwinds in our premise-based communications business in North America. We had a record quarter for Intellisys, where sales increased 12% year over year. Starting this quarter, we changed to net revenue recognition for software as service sales for our NT business. Both net sales and gross profit for NT were $1.7 million for the third quarter. Excluding the planned divestitures, non-GAAP gross profit dollars for the quarter decreased 12% year over year. This decrease included the $4.5 million expense for inventory that I mentioned previously. As a result, our third quarter fiscal year 2020 non-GAAP gross profit margin was 11.4%, below the 12% gross margin we expected in our third quarter forecast. SG&A expenses increased $1.2 million from the prior year to $79 million for the third quarter fiscal year 2020. We have made investments in our growing recurring revenue and service-based businesses. Our investments also include the digital capabilities we've added with the acquisition of NT. This is part of our strategy around our software development group, which Mike mentioned earlier. Our third quarter fiscal year 2020 non-GAAP operating income was $14.8 million, or 2% of net sales, compared with $30.6 million, or 4.1%, in the prior year quarter. We have a $46 million contingent consideration liability on our March 31, 2020 balance sheet, and this reflects the present value of expected future earnout payments for our IntelliSys acquisition. For the third quarter fiscal year 2020, we recorded an expense for the increase in fair value contingent consideration of uh, $0.6 million, or $600,000 for IntelliSys. For our fourth quarter fiscal year 2020, we estimate the change in fair value of contingent consideration to be expense, an expense of approximately $1.3 million. For fiscal year 2020, we estimate the effective tax rate to range from 29.5% to 30.5%, excluding discrete items. This estimate increased from the impact of lower forecasted earnings and changes in the geographical mix. Now turning to our balance sheet and cash flow, we generated strong operating cash flow of $32 million for our third quarter, and trailing 12 months operating cash flow was $148 million. Working capital investment declined 5% quarter over quarter and 12% year over year. The planned divestitures had approximately $155 million in working capital at March 31, 2020, down approximately $50 million from the June 30, 2019 balance. At March 30, 
1st, 2020, we had cash and cash equivalents of $35 million and debt of $321 million. Our net leverage ratio totaled approximately 2.4 times trailing 12-month adjusted EBITDA. With the economic disruption due to COVID-19, we enter the June quarter with uncertainty around near-term customer demand. Accordingly, we are not providing a forecast range for net sales or earnings per share for the fourth quarter fiscal year 2020. We expect our sales and earnings per share to be down sequentially for the fourth quarter as compared to the third quarter. While we are not providing a forecast range, I can share with you that our net sales for the month of April declined 22% year over year for GAAP net sales. For the month of April, non-GAAP net sales, excluding the negative impact of foreign currency translation, that's a 17% year-over-year decline. And now I'd like to turn the call back over to Mike for a closing comment. Before we close, I want to take this opportunity to welcome our new director, Jeff Rodek, to our board of directors. Jeff has served as chairman and CEO of Hyperion Solutions as president and COO of Ingram Micro, and also spent 16 years at FedEx. With Jeff's leadership experience in the enterprise software and technology solutions industries, as well as his extensive logistics experience, we look forward to Jeff's guidance as ScanSource continues to advance our digital strategy. With our investments in software and cloud solutions, we are well positioned to deliver digital initiatives through our multiple sales channels. Our world-class team of employees, working with the best group of technology suppliers in the world, position us well to help our sales partners achieve unusual success. We believe we are prepared to weather the storm of the COVID-19 pandemic. We will now open it up for questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, you need to press star 1 on your telephone. To withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Please stand by to speak in the Q&A One moment for questions. And our first question comes from Adam Tyndall with Raymond James. You may proceed. Addison on for Adam. Uh, I appreciate the color into April trends, but I was wondering, you know, did those declines moderate as April progressed? Uh, in other words, do you think, you know, we're kind of through the trough of the, of the declines and the, the second derivative is getting modestly better? Uh, this is Mike Bauer speaking. So I, I think the color we gave so far is all we're willing to talk about. Um, it's still early in the quarter, clearly, and one month. Um, it's not clear yet what that means. And as all of our quarters are, we never know exactly what the um, what's going to happen in the first month of the quarter. But certainly uh, being down 22% has us um, concerned. And it's something that we're looking at closely as to understand what this might indicate for the rest of the quarter. Okay, I understand it's a very dynamic environment. And then uh, just, just a follow-up, you mentioned uh, that, that you had some higher costs related to safety measures as well as some expedite costs. And I was just wondering if you could, you know, potentially give us the sense of magnitude of these. And then just to the extent that you have any color, uh, do these types of costs start to attenuate next quarter? Or, or are you expecting any tailwind or, or any incremental headwinds from these? Thanks. Yeah, so Madison, this is Jerry. And I think what we're trying to do there is just give a sense that we, we, uh, we had a little bit of an increased cost in the March quarter. We're really expecting that to uh, – to, uh, come to more fruition in the June quarter, but we don't really have a, a sense of exactly what that number is yet. Um. Okay. Understood. I, I appreciate the time. Sure. And our next question comes from Keith Hausman with North Coast Research. You may proceed, sir. If you have your line on you, could you please let me to line?
Keith, this is Jerry. If you're, uh, we, we can't hear you if you're speaking. Hello. There we go. Jerry, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, crazy times that we're all entering into. Um, hey, Jerry, I'm asking about the uh, the credit quality. Can you just give me a little bit of color in terms of, uh, I guess, additional steps you guys are taking to make sure that credit quality is maintained? And then just remind us what happened in the, I guess, the recession of 2009, 2010, and how did your credit quality hold up? Yeah, sure, Keith. So um, as you have figured out, as we've all figured out, 2008 and 2009, are completely different than uh, than this um, episode that we're in, right? That was a uh, absolutely a financial crisis. Um, we've got a lot more people um, uh, impacted, uh, you, you know, than we had in 2008 and 2009. Um, so we're we're viewing this as being completely different. Um, so what we're doing is we're uh, we're reaching out to uh, all of our customers. Um, and making sure that they're all safe um, and that they are, uh, you know, how their businesses are doing, how they're experiencing, and, and um, you know, if they need our help, we are, um, along with our suppliers, we are designing programs for those people to, to be able to, uh, you know, to continue to, to, to do business and to thrive. Um, we really haven't seen, um, again, for us, I think, Keith, you know, um, the impact of COVID really is is starting to take shape in this June quarter. It really wasn't taking shape in in the March quarter. So, but we're we're monitoring people's credit very closely. Gotcha. I appreciate it. And then, as I think about your POS portal business, do I, is it safe to assume that also was not a big impact of last quarter? And we're probably going to see more of an impact now because if I remember correctly, POS portal's primary customers are more retailers and restaurants. You know, more skewed to a small, medium-sized business owner, correct? Um, well, so th- there's a um, there's two or three different channels that they go through. Um, there's some very large uh, contract customers that we deal with, and they may have small to medium businesses that they deal with. Um, and then we also go through uh, independent software vendors, and yeah, those are more small to medium. But I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that they're all hospitality or, or retail. Um, you know, we have uh, have seen a little bit of a decline there. Just just think about, again, people sheltering in place. Um, you know, most credit card transactions, I think, are taking place with a uh, credit card not present. Um, so... Okay, I appreciate it. And if I can squeeze one more question in here. I guess you guys can give me a little bit more color on the inventory adjustment. If I understood you right, you guys put the system in back in November. Um, perhaps how did you guys come out with the adjustment now, and uh, are we all done with any adjustments going forward? Sure. So um, in the uh, December quarter, Keith, we were, as with any new system, you know, we were spending time getting acclimated to the new system, new processes and new procedures and really just trying to take care of of our customers, make sure that they were all satisfied. And as we got further into the March quarter, we um, began to realize that we had um, some bin level accuracy issues, um, which caused us to need to increase, um, you know, the amount of activity that we were doing, whether those be cycle counts or, uh, you know, uh, getting our IT and other resources involved, um, and that's those those activities have resulted in a number of changes um, that I think, as we are not, I think, as I indicated, have made uh, better results for for April. Um, you know, we're anticipating that um, that that trend will continue, but you know, just remains to be seen. But we're confident that uh, the worst is definitely behind us. So was this an issue where you guys thought you had inventory and you didn't, or vice versa? Uh, yeah, ba- basically, Keith, we we would go to a bin, um, and you know what the system was saying, hey, we think we have ten, but we had uh, six. And so part of what we found out in the March quarter was, um, you know, we were thinking, oh, okay, it's not in bin six, it's in bin twelve. Well, as we got further along uh, the process that we do in the warehouse, 
is a, something called a linear cycle count. So we really have 36,000 bins in our warehouse and we're literally counting one by one by one. So as we got further along, we figured out that uh, you know the accuracy was, um, we, we weren't going to find it in another bin. Okay. Got it. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Sure. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question or comment, please press star then one on your telephone keypad. And our next question comes from Kirk McGinnis with Fidelity and Company. Sir, you may begin. Question. Hey, Chris. Maybe we can start with more after this. Um, so maybe we can just start with maybe the impact uh, COVID's having maybe on a uh, uh, on the different geographies that you're competing within? Is, is anyone being more impacted, and, and how do you see that playing out, maybe? Keith, this is uh, – sorry, Chris, this is Jerry. Um, <clears throat> so I think what uh, what we saw is, um, you know, kind of what we all read in the newspaper or saw, you know, is that uh, Europe was definitely impacted for us sooner um, you know, we saw some of our um, some of our offices need to be uh, uh, closed down or, or work from home sooner than we did in the U.S. Um, then it was the U.S. for us, and then uh, lastly, really LATAM or Brazil. And so, you know, that our our business has just followed exactly what you've seen in the in the news. Okay. In, in sales, seemingly kind of in the same range, if that 22%. Nothing tracked differently in any of the in the other regions. Really. Um, you know, I think that's that's an overall number, but they're all they're all reasonably similar. Maybe maybe Brazil's a little bit better at this point, but uh, they're all reasonably similar. Okay. Um, that, I think last quarter, obviously, there were some some issues around the um, reorganized sales force. Can you just talk maybe a little bit, you know, how they're how that's performing? Um, I thought it would be a little bit longer in terms of maybe them coming back. Obviously, a really good quarter, um, you know, reported. So maybe just an update on that sales reorganization. Yeah, John, why don't you take that one? Yeah, Kurt. Uh, good afternoon. Nice to talk to you, um, Kurt. I think the uh, the sales Chris. reward. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, John. It's Chris. No, they got it wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's Chris. It's okay. <laughs> okay, but I Thanks. definitely did hear it, Chris. That makes me feel <laughs> yeah, better, yeah, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, no, I know. No, I, I understood. Thanks. I was going to be in real trouble if I'm like, I swear I heard Kurt. I wrote it down. Anyway, Kurt, <laughs> Chris, we, uh, we actually uh, are happy with our progress with that reorg um, that we were in the midst of. And if you remember, we were calling one scan source, um, and it definitely took longer than we were uh, hoping for. But um, in the last uh, quarter, we worked hard to rebalance the teams uh, to put us in a position of better coverage and better capacity. Uh, we were able to do um, more training, uh, spend more time um, in um, kind of call-outs with those most affected customers, and uh, develop more mature processes that were missing at the beginning of the transition. And so we think we've made great progress. Clearly more, uh, you know, more work to do, but we're very happy with where we've gotten to and um, uh, that was seen and evidenced by the, um, uh, by the results uh, in the quarter in terms of net sales. Great. And then uh, maybe just a little bit bigger of a, a, a picture question, but just, you know, um, maybe you're still a little bit too early in, but you just maybe talk about some of the opportunities outside the ones you've already seen, uh, maybe an opportunity to go take share, how this maybe changes your business uh, kind of going forward in terms of your thought processes for growth and, and, and maybe, uh, you know, trying to attack that quicker. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think from my vantage point, um, Chris, when I think about it, I think, you know, uh, kind of shorter term, if you're looking at kind of verticals, clearly we're going to continue to see growth in healthcare, in uh, kind of pharmacies, in grocery. Um, uh, we will also continue to see positive growth in 
kind of that barcode and scanning space. I mean, we saw that specifically in those industries. Uh, you think about when you show up to the grocery store and you go to pick up your your items that are now curbside. There's somebody there with a barcode, you know, kind of a, a scanner checking you out. Uh, so all of that we can continue to see growth in. We also can continue to see growth in kind of Main Street retail as it relates to contactless technologies uh, versus the traditional technologies. And obviously, we will continue to see growth just as we did this past uh, month in particular and last quarter in work from home technologies. And I think last but definitely not least, I mean, those are, those are kind of on the, the hardware front, uh, but I think what has us so well positioned is really not only the traditional hardware capabilities, but also that ability to move to the cloud with our partners and their end customers. Uh, and you heard Mike referencing that earlier with uh, our relationships that we announced with Zoom and Microsoft and things we're doing with, uh, with Ring Central um, and others. Great. Thanks for that. I really appreciate it. And uh, good luck in Q4. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Q&A portion of today's conference. I would now like to turn the call back over to Mike Bauer for any closing remarks. Great, and thank you for joining us today. We expect to hold our next conference call to discuss June 30 quarterly and full year results on Tuesday, August 25th, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating, and you may now disconnect. Everyone have a great day.